Hey Jesse, I've got a bit of a problem. What is it, Bush? All the kids at school are being mean to me. What are they saying? They're saying I have gross, disgusting pubes. Aren't you a PE teacher? Not anymore, I'm not. Can you relate to having an annoying bush around? I can actually, yes. Thankfully for you, Bush, Manscaped.com has just launched in Australia to help you with your problem. Manscaped.com is here to help you keep your balls smooth, whether it's you or your partner playing with them. Tell me more about Manscaped.com. Manscaped.com is your go-to brand for below-the-waist grooming. While you're probably already looking for new things to do at home during quarantine, why not add grooming your balls to your routine? But Jesse, I'm worried if I shave my balls, I'll look like Emperor Palpatine. I can see why you'd have that concern, but thankfully the Perfect Package Kit 3.0 includes the cordless body trimmer, the Lawnmower 3.0, but also some liquid formulations to really help you round out that grooming routine. I got some of my own liquid formulations going for you right here. This third generation trimmer actually possesses a cutting edge ceramic blade technology, so your balls are less likely to end up like a scarred, disfigured Emperor Palpatine, and perhaps more like a smooth, cool Mace Windu. Ooh, will my dick be as big as his? <laughs> <laughs> So not only do Manscaped have the best technology in their grooming, they also have the best ingredients in their formulations. Inside the Perfect Package 3.0, you'll also receive the Manscaped Crop Preserver, which is both a ball deodorant and a moisturizer. I need that right now. You're probably gonna be on the couch with your hand on your balls all the time anyway, so why not keep them as smooth as eggs and smelling fresh? But they already smell like eggs. If you subscribe to the Perfect Package, you'll receive a free replacement blade for your lawnmower 3.0 every three months. Oh wow, is there more in the perfect package 3.0? Yes, Busher. For a limited time, subscribers get not one, but two free gifts. The Shed Travel Bag, valued at $39, and the patented high-performance anti-chafing Manscaped boxes. But there is something really important to know, Busher. What would that be, Jesse? We are changing our discount code. So previously, you could use the code TRUEFOOTY all caps, all one word to receive 20% off and free shipping for any Manscaped products. And now the new code is, drum roll please, TRUEFOOTY20, all one word, all caps. So make sure you get that right guys because the previous discount code will not work. The 20 is in honor of the Lord and Savior Matthew Taberner. Remember guys, manscaped.com, use the code TRUEFOOTY2020, link in the description for everything you need. You get 20% off and free shipping on these products. Crikey, it's time to shave those balls. Your balls will thank you and so will TRUEFOOTY. Well, thankfully, the Perfect Package 3.0 kit includes the Lawnmower 3.0 shaver and also a ton of other liquid formulations to round out your grooming routine. I have my own liquid foundation. (laughs) 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 All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to one of the truest football podcasts you will ever find. Top three, you reckon, Bush? Top three. Five, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. there is the real footy podcast. I think that's the yeah. ages podcast. So, yeah. yeah, we do have a few competitors in the trueness stakes. But, yep. uh, Busher, how are you? Yeah, I'm going pretty good, mate. Yourself? Good, good. I heard you're a uh, bit of a content machine now. Oh, yeah, I've to the, been uh, pumping it out a little, yeah. Mo- what about out. the content? <laughs> <laughs> also, that pumped out one potty so far with a few technical issues. So, I, I haven't clipped it and done as much with it as I would have liked. Yep. So I'm hoping this second one we filmed earlier today comes out a bit better so I can clip it up a bit more, pump out that content on a few different channels. Nice one, nice one. Welcome to the Multi-Podcast Club. Absolutely. You and I both uh, got involved in a new podcast over the last yep. month or whatever. Expanding our horizons. Exactly, yeah. Moving away yep. from each other, but never too far. Exactly, Mark. We always end up back. Yeah. So we're talking about, of course, you launched your project, um, Outdoor Hoops Experience. Yep. With your friend Frosty, yep. and uh, I've of course got Cold World on the go, so we'll yep. leave the links and stuff in the description of that. Yeah, yeah. Check that out. So, but basically, run us through it. Basically, uh, Bush's perspective on the NBA. Yeah, pretty much, man. Frosty, we usually get quite divisive. First couple, we've probably agreed far more than we usually do. Actually, like a lot of these NBA awards and stuff, probably been pretty straightforward so far. Yep. First round playoffs are usually pretty straightforward because it's a lot of top teams versus the not as good teams. Yeah, okay. So there's a lot more stuff for us to grow upon, and plus I've been too worried about the production side of things. So I've, my content's been lacking because I'm too busy going, is the interface working? Is the camera like, Yeah. We'll I've been too, yeah. Got a new interface settings. and everything, so that's a yep. challenge in itself. But nah, you'll get there. Uh, how would you feel about the first one, though, content wise? Content wise, I was pretty happy. Like, I could have been a bit sharper on the content front, but yeah, like I said, I was a bit worried about the other side of things. Yeah, yeah there's a lot to yeah. think about. But um, yeah, so go check yeah. out, if you're a fan of NBA, go check out Bush's new podcast, uh, shot in a very familiar set right yep. here. 
just pretty much the camera's face and the other side of the bar, basically. We exactly. played with it a little bit. Yep, that's it. Um, I hope my iPhone camera doesn't audio sync issues again. <laughs> yeah. My mouth right. was a bit out of whack on the first one. Ah, yeah. I'm going to leave that joke through to the keeper. Um, yeah, Bush, we have about two weeks left on this Manscaped promotion thing. Yep. As uh, we would have just seen, that's our third ad just gone out. Absolutely, um, with the new code. Yes, I was going to say, if anyone skipped ahead of the, the ad, first of all, what are you doing? Yeah, bloody earth, the ads are the best content we've put out in months. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> most interaction ever. <laughs> nah, um, new code, TRUEFOOTY, all caps. Uh, sorry, TRUEFOOTY20. Yep. Uh, all that stuff is in the description of this video. So we'll move on to the football. Yep. We've been uh, waffling for about a minute or two now. So um, let's talk footy, Bush. Bloody earth. Um, indigenous round. It's always good round. A lot of good football played. Yeah. The um, jerseys, Guernseys, however you call them. Some of them, every year there's always two or three of it just mm. very impressive new Indigenous jerseys that just look outstanding. There's always a few. They always nail them, a few at least. Jai's actually asked who has the best Indigenous jumpers. Three o, three o, bit biased for me, obviously, but mm. three o are usually pretty consistent. We've got that rich connection to Indigenous culture as well. We've had a lot of great Indigenous players. I like Adelaide's quite a lot, to be honest. Yeah, I liked yours this year, actually. The, the one Tim Kelly was modelling the other day. That looked yes. really good. I was quite like, yeah, that's a uh, nice looking fresh Guernsey you got there. I'm trying to find it on here. Um, yeah, there's a few going around. Sydney's is pretty good. Oh, Essendon's I like. Yeah, Essendon usually know yeah. how to do them pretty well. But those... Black and red sort of colours are usually pretty good in the Indigenous art yeah. styles. Like They're pretty good with those blacks and reds. Yep. That uh, that Tim Kelly one is the same Eagles one that's been going yeah, for a few years. Yeah, it's been a couple of years at least, yeah. Yeah, it's fairly popular. Still not, I still like it. It's bloody... Yeah. Uh, not sure about ports, maybe. Haven't seen theirs it's yet. that. And yeah, it's just looks like a cat. The problem is they're wearing their, they're wearing their <laughs> looks like a cat. They're wearing their away jumper. So um, Hawthorns is cool, mostly brown. I like the mostly brown color in Hawthorns. Uh, it's a bit basic. I like a, a bit, bit more going on with yeah. them usually. Yeah, that's true. Um, well, I thought this, uh, we so this podcast we were going to do Discord questions, which we still will if we get time for the yeah. more. We'll just otherwise we'll add the rest to the next potty. But um, I added my own question in here. Yeah. Uh, based on a radio segment I heard on the way here in honour of Indigenous Round. Yeah. Who are some of the best... Who are, who are your favourite Indigenous players to watch in the game right now? Well, I'll go the go, easy... Go to Freeman. I'll go the easy Michael Walters, just pay him, get him out of the way. Yeah, yeah. obvious reasons. Matt Free- Tabner. <laughs> Alex Pierce. He actually is Indigenous, though, to be fair, Alex is Pierce. He? Yeah. I think I knew that and forgot it. Yeah, he's one you can't tell, but he, he is. Yeah. He's always really supportive Doesn't and good. Joel Hamlin kind of... Yeah, Joel Hamlin... Def- I think Joel Hamling is as well, but I don't know what mm. purport like. I wasn't sure if yeah. he actually was or if he just identified as Indigenous because he. I'm talking about Adam yeah. Hole here because I'm not actually sure, but uh, like he lived yeah. in a community with other Indigenous people. Yeah, uh, maybe. I don't know. So I know he's always in the Indigenous stuff, and he is, yeah. yeah, he's always gets amongst it. Yeah, yeah. From other clubs, Eddie Betts is always an easy one to say. Like he's been a champion for years. Some yeah. of the goals and dynamic stuff he can do. Mm. Just absolutely highlights galore. True. Even Chucky Cameron's another oh, one. Yeah, but he's Charlie taken Cameron. the throne from Eddie, so you yeah. enjoy the prince's work carrying was, on from the king there. I was going to say, that's a, a good shout. I think Betts has traditionally been one of my favourites just because he's so he's just capable of doing shit other people can't. And Charlie yeah. Cameron probably has taken that in terms of the excitement factor right yeah. now just because he is genuinely one of the best players in the game. Yet. Well, probably yeah. the best in, in his specific role. Yeah. Um, Mickey Walters for me, definitely probably my favourite Fremantle player ever. Um, I love Willy Rioli. Like, I'm yeah. a huge Willy Rioli fan. Um, one one player I've I'm really come around on, and this is a player I was wrong about when we drafted him at the Eagles, was Liam Ryan. Yeah. I used to think... When you they, thought he was one-dimensional, yeah. seagully type of forward sort but, of thing. Yeah, maybe not seagully, but yeah. So, like, he obviously came through as a mature age player from the Waffle, tearing it up as a lead-up forward. Yeah. And I thought... There's a lot of good lead-up players in the Waffle who don't translate to AFL. And so when we got Re- Willie Rioli and Liam Ryan, I thought Willie Rioli is so much better. But Liam Ryan has added so much to his game in the last two years with his tackling and his pressure, plays with so much heart. And in addition to that, he's actually a high-flying goal kicker yeah. as well. Absolutely love the kid. Yeah, yeah I can say kid. He's younger than me. Yeah, he's good to watch for sure. <laughs> good for a pluck or two a game. Like Yeah. Yeah, so he'll do something in a game where you go, you've never seen that before. So Yeah, probably played his one one of his best games for the club yeah. on the weekend. Um, I'm going to nominate Charlie, uh, it's not Charlie, Chad Wingard as, yeah, yeah I mean, whether or not you think he's likable because he's just kind of got that sort of like arrogance around him, mm. but he's also 
like one of the most entertaining, smooth players to watch. Like, you know how when you're watching Pendlebury play, you're just like, shit, this guy can just do other things other people can't. Chad Wingard is like that for me, where he can just he just looks so graceful. Um, Isaac Rankin, yeah, it's hard not to like him. Yeah, um, he, yeah. Ooh, there was someone I was trying to think of, but he midfielder. Who am I trying to think of? Not Brad Hill, but I'll give Brad Hill a shout. Yeah, He's, yeah, Brad Hill's sick. Yeah, I'll give him the shout. I'll shout, but it wasn't who I was trying to think of. What do you think of Buddy Franklin? Buddy Franklin's always kind of annoyed yeah. me, but I do respect his probably. Yeah, probably the sick. greatest yeah. indigenous player cl- close to ever but also one of the best like forwards ever as yeah. well do you know what I mean so yeah, um, yeah but he's a worthy definitely nomination even though he's kind off. of annoyed me just he's got that, a bit of that Cristiano Ronaldo about him just mm. a bit of fig jam but I mean he is also yeah. a goat so yeah you got to have that attitude in some ways to get to that position Mm. I, yeah, like, I, saying, I can't begrudge like an athlete that's made it for having that sort of attitude too yeah. much because you know you need that self conviction to get to that level. Look at Dusty Danger and Fife, probably the big three. They're all yeah. wankers. Yeah, <laughs> I can say without having met any of them. <laughs> nah, but both notorious for all having massive egos. Yeah, and, yeah. I'm gonna get shit. Fife's like the guy. Way. He's like nice in person, but you can tell looking at him, he's got an ego. He, yeah. he rates himself. He like yeah. loves the attention. Yeah. I reckon he's that kid that wasn't that cool in high school and he's just lapping it up now that he's some <laughs> AFL superstar. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. You're probably right. Yeah. Cool. All right, we'll move on to some more relevant footy. Yeah. Bush, I'm going to put you on the spot with this kind of because we've already had a little debate about it. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So since the last potty, the it seems like nothing's like concrete yet, but it seems like the AFL finals... Will yeah. probably be located in Queensland entirely. Yep. This is what we're thinking. I, I heard are yeah. they moving like commissioners over there? Some, some sounds like, like yeah. Executive, all the executives, executives are going to be in Queensland, right. yeah, yeah, okay. or club executives or something are in Queensland or something. Yeah, I guess first of all, what do you think about that? They're doing what you can't control the circumstances yeah. this year. Like you got to do what you got to do. Like everyone knew it was going to be a different year. The second all this stuff happened, you just mm-hmm. got to roll with the punches. I feel. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Like, because because obviously we live in WA, and the WA we're kind of like lobbying for the grand final. I yeah. don't think it's going to happen personally. It makes sense to have the finals in Queensland because you're going to have issues about isolating. Yeah. You know, per a port. You'd have to if you're going to have it here. You'd have to bring everyone here in Cape Amir, like the way. Yeah. The way yeah. McGowan and the WA government have run mm. our situation here, they'd have to come and stay if finals were going to be here. Yeah, uh, which I. I couldn't say I'm Yeah, doing and that. it just doesn't make sense to do that when you've already yeah. got teams settled over there. Exactly, like and yeah. there's more resorts and stuff in Queensland probably. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So yeah, okay, so yeah, we're on board with that. So this is this was my position the other day yep. and had a little debate. We don't have to ra- drag it out through the mud. Completely. I'll say if we drag it out again, we'll be here fucking two nah, hours. Nah. We'll just, I just want yeah. to clarify. Well, TLDR, is that too long didn't read sort of thing? Is that how we're going to... Yes. Yeah. So essentially, I... Um, Submitted. It's <laughs> a very legal term. <laughs> on turn it's eleven fifty nine PM yeah, dead yeah. on the de- on the deadline. Yes. The yes. Uh, prosecution submits. No. The basically my submits. my stance was that we had Fuck a, Brisbane, everyone else is a legitimate premier. We've had um the discussion about like whether or not AFL twenty twenty season is gonna be an asterisk because of the inequities with it. Okay. Yeah. Up until this point I've been pretty much on board the no, um this is not an asterisk. However, there is a specific circumstance that I can see unfolding where for me, yeah. there would be an asterisk. And what that is, is let's say we have the entire final series in Queensland. If Brisbane is allowed to have home finals at the Gabba and no one else can have home finals at their choice of ground, then if Brisbane win the flag from that scenario, that for me is an asterisk. From a, like, this is this is probably where the, like, I can see from a personal perspective, like, in your own rationalization of the world, that's 100% fair enough. It'll probably in be... your own warp drug out of the fantasy. Like, 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 what I'm saying is it'll be, probably be the same in my perception of it. Like, I, I won't go, if Brisbane win, I, like, won't go to the greatest premiers ever or whatever. But I think where we sort of had the hang-up was, like, I still think, like, they should be just 100, like, if you're going to asterisk it, you should have asterisked it the second Corona happened, like. You can't asterisk it now that we've done what we've had to do to keep football going and they've just happened to... You can't shit on them for just being in the lucky spot at the right time. You can't diminish their hypothetical achievement just because AFL circumstances are fucked and we've had to go to their home state. Well, this advantage is still preventable. 
So if it's still preventable, then it's it is, but in, like at this point, they're going to be in Queensland. So even if they played games at Metricon rather than yeah, it's still. Well, I totally. That's what I think they should do. Well, like, that's more fair, but it's still not going to be fair. Like nothing's going to be. F- I think that's fairly fair. Fairly fair. Eh. No, so let, let's say Brisbane finished second, Port finished first, as is currently. Yeah. But why would Brisbane should? Why should Brisbane be able to host Geelong, who finished third? at the Gabba at their home ground, but Port have to play at a neutral venue against West Coast. Because we've been hit by a pandemic, which means but normal circumstances can't apply. Like, realistically, you can. You yeah, can asterisk just... the second, the 17-round season, the second it's crying, you just go... No, 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 not at all. Because we have a prev- like a situation here where you can prevent one team having a, like an absurd advantage. You can't prevent it, though. They're in you, Queensland. They're still going to be in you, their home you, fucking state. They've been there all year. You can't change the what's fucking The simple way to prevent it is to have them host games at Metricon. And then it's still a fucking advantage for them, though. It's, two, it's no, an it's hour not. down the road from their regular fucking headquarters compared to everyone who's living in a fucking hotel. It's still an advantage to them. Like, no. You can't fucking just go, yeah. No, like, there's a, a huge disadvantage. Well, no, what, an hour drive from their fucking normal well, place compared to like... The, the advantage best. with playing home and away isn't necessarily just how far you travel to get there. Yeah, there's the it's ground... About, there's mostly ground dimensions and, you know, crowd advantage as well. There's a big difference when you're fucking flying across the Nullarbor and that sort of so shit. So you're like saying compen- if Fremantle played a home final at the Wacker, they would have the same advantage they would if they played at Optus Stadium? Not the same advantage, but they'd still have the advantage of a team having to come to Perth, having to go for all that bullshit. I would argue that's a neutral game. Nah. 100%. Nah. They've come to Perth. It's in Perth. Like, for, if, it was, if it was Eagles versus Dockers, maybe it'd be... But even then, it's like... Oh, okay. Well, maybe we'll agree to disagree on this. I, my position is that the Brisbane have a home advantage at the Gabbo, not Metricon. My thing is, it's like, either way, they've had... An, like either way, You either got to asterisk it the second Corona happens, or you can't just asterisk the season when it's convenient just because one team, due to unique, extreme circumstances... You can't, like... For yeah. me, you can't shit on them and be like, they're sh- not really premiers. Blah, blah, blah. Like, they're still premiers. But, like, when it comes down to, like, the debate of different premierships over the years, theirs can easily be diminished in, like, that yeah, debate. Yeah, as, as it should be, in my opinion. Yeah. If the, in, th- in this situation, if Brisbane, say, play four home finals at the Gabba, which might not happen, if they play three finals at Metricon and every game is neutral and then the grand finals at the Gabba, I'm okay with that. I don't think they're neutral. Like at that point, it's not neutral. I like because the, their fans can still get to Metricon easily. Like they'll take that hour or so drive down to Gold Coast or whatever. I, I would still argue that they would way rather play with a ground to suited to their dimensions. I'd argue that's mm. just as big, especially when you're thinking you're not going to get a full crowd in there anyway. Yeah, but still, like, well, obviously they've got an advantage of their home ground, but like, it's one of those things. Like, there's that much going on. You can't just hang up on them specifically. I think you can if they're getting an absurd advantage, which they would be. And it's preventable. I don't think it is preventable, though, in the circumstances. It, okay. I, unless they may... It's preventable in that you can make them play at Metricon. How is that not preventable? I still don't... I still think if you're going to take the argument that they're in an advantage, they've still got that advantage at Metricon. Not as big, but... Okay. Well, we'll put it to the viewers. Do you think Brisbane are playing home games if they're playing at Metricon? I wouldn't say they are. They're still if more I was likely. West Coast, would you rather play them at Metricon or the Gabba? Obviously, you'd rather play them at Metricon. Obviously, yeah. So there is a clear difference. Right, but there's still the fact that they're an hour away compared to like teams that are flown. Like, well, if you're no going to try and argue they've got an advantage, they had an advantage long before any of this shit happened. Yeah, of course they did. But you can diminish how far out of control that advantage gets. And or in this situation, every team is hubbing in Queensland. No one's traveling to it. But still, the teams living in hotels away from their families and shit compared to Brizzy, who probably yeah. allowed to go home after training as long as they don't leave the house. They probably... Well, could. the argument I reject is that just because teams have a little advantage, them having a large advantage, it's all the same thing. Do you know what I mean? It's one of those things that's never going to be fair, though, Like especially this year. like you just got to sort of... Yeah, but that's not an argument to make it completely unfair. I'm not saying to make... I'm, my argument's more like... I'm not saying fair or unfair. It's never going to be fair. I'm just saying don't shit on Brisbane if they win a flag. That's what I'm. That's my whole thing. It's like you're making it go diminishing what they're achieving. Like they can't help the fact that they happen to be in the state where football is. They can't help this. They're they're just doing what they have to do, and you can't 
Like, it, it's not about pub, you can't it's, like publicly shit on their flag. It's not about just publicly ca- shitting on it, but is it? Is it like flag? you can you can shit on their flag if you're going to shit on it. If Portland, you can shit on it if you're going to shit on it, regardless because of Corona. You can't just shit on it because Brisbane happened to. Why? What if Brisbane have an advantage? Oh, what if fucking Richmond have an advantage when they barely leave Melbourne every fucking year and win really the flag? Think, do you really think this is the same thing as Richmond? Well, it's not the same fucking thing because it's a fucking pandemic. We're in a fucking unprecedented situation. There's not going to be a fucking regular scale. You go to cop what you got to cop. Wait, so your argument because there's a pandemic, everything's out the door. We don't have to maintain fairness. That's what it sounds like. Because I think that's ridiculous. Well, you do it within the parameters, but like, what fucking parameters you got to work with? Brisbane don't get to leave their state this year, so realistically, fucking yeah. So if they've already got a fairly good advantage without having to travel, why would you not make take measures to try and prevent their ad- advantage getting too ridiculous? Well, obviously, take those. Like, I'm not saying don't take those measures. I'm, I, I'm purely saying like, because well, it sounds like when you like arguing this, it just feels like you're trying to diminish a hype, a, like, something. Like, like I'm having a go at Brisbane. Yeah, that's what. That's like what. Why? Okay. Like, because they, listen because they're doing everything they can. Like, you can't blame them for fucking. Let's use let's re- move. Let's use a removed example. Okay, Australia versus England in a cricket World Cup final. All right, mm. <clears throat> completely removed. Someone, an Australian fan, pays the umpires to rig it by twenty percent in Australia's favour. Okay, Australia win the World Cup. But that's infecting cheat. That's cheating, though. Brisbane are playing by the rules. Brisbane are doing everything they can. That's cheating. Yeah, but beyond- so is Australia. The cricket team hasn't done anything wrong, but they've got an unfair advantage. So you can't say don't shit on them because they haven't done anything wrong. If it's not fair, it's, it's not still- a legitimate premiership. Someone's cheated from though. You shit on the cheating from though. Like that's che- that's difference between cheating and within the c- com- competition rules that all eighteen teams are participating in. Yes, but that's a circumstance beyond. The parameters of the competition. This is purely the parameters yeah, but it's of competition. Someone completely removed from from the cricket team. So what I'm saying is like, just because Brisbane haven't done anything wrong, it doesn't make their premiership valid. That, like, if there's extenuating circumstances, you either have to asterisk the whole season because of Corona, or you don't. As far as I'm okay. Concerned. All right. Well, we, we won't. Move. Yeah, I'm starting to get pissed off. To be yeah, honest, I think that's coming through. <laughs> but um, look, put it to the put it to the people who watch the potty. What do you think? About Fuck Brisbane, everyone else is the premiers. That's a strawman argument. You're a straw man, you scrawny git. <laughs> All right, let's move on to some Discord questions. Uh, okay, not too far removed from what we were talking about. Bruce says, where should the grand final be held? Um, so, look, like, like we said, nothing's been confirmed yet. Um, w- at least what should be the decision-making process, do you think? Well, realistically, it'll be... They'll go, Queensland's helped us keep this season alive. We should do the right thing by Queensland, and I wouldn't blame them for doing that, ultimately. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't really feel as though anyone deserves the grand final, but I guess from a logistics perspective... Yeah, it's purely, like, in terms of deserve... Like, like we were saying before, like, about competition, like, the, uh, the grand finals at the MCG, that's, like, one of the parameter, consistent parameters of regular AFL season. Like, mm-hmm. this year isn't one of those regular years, so... You just got to go with what logistically makes sense in all this chaos. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. How do you feel, I guess, as a fan about a potential grand final at the Gabba? Though, I can't help but feel like it's a shit house ground to have a grand final. I understand. Obviously, like, it's right. obviously shit because Queensland don't give a shit about like Queenslanders don't give a shit about Australian rules football. And it just looks like a bit of a hole. Yeah, stadium. obviously, like that. Yeah. But like, yeah, yeah, it would be cool to have a Optus Stadium grand final. Optus but- would be like the obvious sort of like. Because you can get the most crowd here. You've, it's the most state-of-the-art facility in Australia, like all that. But WA yeah. probably hasn't done quite enough yeah. in terms of with to work with the AFL. Yeah, for but me, I don't think... I think I agree with WA not working with the AFL, but yeah, they ha- actually they haven't done enough back and forth with the AFL to really... Mm for the AFL to really seriously consider that unless they're just thinking pure dollar signs, let's pack Optus because there's the biggest crowd. Yeah. I would, I don't know. For me, I, like, I don't think it, personally, it should come into play which date has helped the AFL. But realistically, that's exactly what they're going to decide yeah. on anyway. Um, and yeah, I think it doesn't make sense that to have teams isolate for two weeks before playing a grand final here, even yeah. if you did have three weeks of finals over there. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. So you might as well just have the grand final. So I don't think they'd have to cop the two weeks because like... 
when Hawthorne Carlton came in, they played each other while they were still quarantined. When Sydney Geelong, oh, sorry, Collingwood Geelong came, they played each other while they were still in quarantine conditions. So yeah, you could okay. fly the two teams in to play the grand final while they're in their quarantine. Yeah. Okay, that's a good point. You yeah, could keep them in that. their bubble or whatever. Yeah, okay. You could yeah. do that. That might be strange, but yeah. Well, yeah. we'll see what happens. By the time this comes out, we might have an... Actually, we probably... The grand final play. parade, they'll all be wearing fucking hazmat suits. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Marching exactly. down Hay Street. Nicholas R43, on a similar vein, wants to know, is there anything from this year, in this COVID-shortened year, that you think should be kept in or will be kept in um, going forward Nothing's really Impressed me too much Like the shorter quarters Like at first I liked that idea But it's, I've grown off it a bit Like I can't Like I liked the idea In theory Like I thought it meant The players would be more Like push themselves more Rather than Yeah Having those complacent Patches in quarters But I suppose that the Having concentrated Like weeks of like Five games yeah. in four weeks Kind of offsets that Yeah, as yeah. Well. Like look at Collingwood Fucking barely hanging together With, with a piece of string That team Because of having to play so many games in so many different like states as well. I feel like they've been robbed in terms of the, the fixturing. Like I think we're talking about it. Like, oh in, no, they had to go to a few different states. Yeah, but they went to like three different states in 10 days or something oh, and had three no. games. Well, I mean, that's, that's not, you can't compare that to any other season. Yeah, like, yeah. And even like any club right now is not going through that. Mm. That's not even within the COVID season. That's crazy. Like Every that, team's copping the three, four day breaks or whatever, isn't that yeah, what they but reckon? Not they? between three states. So they played in Adelaide, Sid, uh, Perth, and Queensland, I think. They started here then. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that, that's stiff, but, you know, that yeah. sucks. Um, yeah, okay. So, I mean, what in terms of what could be brought in next year or kept next year, the only real changes are um, more, more games in a shorter period of time and shorter quarters. Uh, and that's about it, really. Yeah, um, I don't mind the weekday games, but yeah, I'm not a fan. Oh, okay. I so probably prefer the more traditional format. I feel this like, ties into Cat Attack's question as well. What do you think of the footy frenzy we've seen this year? Do you think it could stick around for the coming years? And should we have buys within that time frame? So, okay, sorry, go on. What did you think of twenty like, games or thirty three games in twenty days? I seen? liked it. Like it was something different. It was good television, considering there's not much like live sport or live anything on television at the moment. So it was a good spectacle, considering the circumstances. But mm. normal years, I'm just as happy to watch a game on a weekend or once they get into a bit of like a Thursday, Friday, mm. a few Saturdays, a few Sunday game, occasional Monday game maybe. But yeah, well, yeah. like your Queen's birthday games, those sort of shit are usually a Monday anyway. As a content creator, it I disliked having it. Um, that's the recording, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, as a content creator, I disliked it because I had less time to prepare tip yeah. videos, and I had to skip one altogether. Um, as a fan, it was yeah, like you said, nice to have footy on each night, but I don't think it's sustainable, and I don't think it can be brought forward into future seasons. I think the players who are, like we have a playing body that's very sort of unionized and. They have a lot yeah. of rights, um, and it's a good thing. But, I mean, I think they're going to miss their structured Monday to Sunday routine of like, recovery on a Monday, mm. blah, 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 um, training Thursday, training on the weekend. Yeah, that's where I was going to get at as well. Like, Because with sports like basketball and stuff where they play during the week and stuff, they can get away with it because basketball is not mm. as physically draining as football. Like, yeah. Look at NFL. They only play one game a week. Yeah. And they, it's like they have their similar to us it's like the weekdays their preparation their recovery all that stuff and then the weekend yeah and I, yeah. I, I as far as I'm concerned it's a bit of a if it ain't broke don't exactly that attitude yeah. as well I'm pretty I'm like pretty happy with the the yeah. weekend football and um and no I don't think we should pursue it there's no reason to unless you're going to have a 38 game season to make the uh, yeah, but 34 game season to make it totally yeah. fair which is never really going to happen so um what do you think football will be like next year asks Jai so I mean fuck and it's good as it's anyone's guess with uh, COVID, but do you think we'll have a normal season by round one next year? I'm optimistic for Australia to be in the position where we can probably mm. have a normal season. Maybe it'd probably start a little late, maybe around April instead of like that Marchy sort of start. Mm. Start after Easter sort of thing. Yeah. Well, we mm. can at least start with no crowds. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, well, I mean, we started round one this year with no crowds. How long away are we talking? This is about... Is that eight months? Yeah, roughly. Or no, about six months. Six months would be February, so seven months, we yeah. call it, to the start of the season. Um, will Melbourne be back to normal? Like, what we were like seven months ago, Wuhan was cooked. Yeah. And now Wuhan is, what, they're having, like, big 
festivals and shit like that. It's hard to tell with Wuhan though, because it's yeah. China. That could be telling you bloody anything. Well, by the looks of it, they are not social yeah. distancing and they are back to normal. But whether or not people yeah. are still dying left, right, and centre is another question. Yeah, still to be fair, people here aren't social distancing. Probably yeah. in Melbourne, they weren't until they. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing, like, where New Zealand, as soon as they had four cases showed up, they shut everything down. Melbourne, they were, like, mm. kept an eye on it for, like, two weeks as the number kept going up and up. Yeah. By the time that's happened, it's going to spread like shit. That's the other scary thing in New Zealand at the moment. Obviously, they had, like, four, was it, yeah, four, four cases, cases out of nowhere yeah. pop up. Frozen food or something, I believe, they thought it came in yeah, through. Right. Yeah. Well, from, like, frozen, imported. like, yeah, frozen seafood or some shit from China. Jesus like something. Christ, fucking. that's terrifying. Who the hell gets frozen seafood from China? <laughs> where i get my salmon <laughs> um yeah so i mean i don't know what football we like next year fingers crossed we're like yeah. we have a normal season yeah like i said I, I could anticipate that they um that they have you know hopefully no hubs but like we have a we fixture a normal season and then worst case scenario we have limited crowds yeah um honestly it's hard to imagine without a vaccine that we'll have full crowds by round one mm. if you think about yeah. it like it almost seems irresponsible i mean maybe wa can do it the right way going but yeah 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 it'd be one of those things like they just have to keep the border in control make sure the people coming in but like because the fact of the matter is australian citizens have the right to come to australia so like there's people that have overseas that have mm. even after three months after the shit's happened going oh i'm gonna go home now yeah so they've decided to come home three months later mm. they've copped the hotel quarantine or whatever yeah. Giving it to the guard. The guard's gone home to his family. <laughs> yeah. Ramadan's just gotten out. Everyone's gotten it, apparently. <laughs> is that right? Is it Ramadan? Yeah. Apparently, like, that's what I'd heard from people I know that live in Melbourne. Ramadan had finished, so everyone was out oh, celebrating, yeah. like, eating, getting together, and that's how it spread. Mm. That's one of the, like, one of the factors that led to it yeah. popping back off in Melbourne. That doesn't surprise me. Yeah. Yeah. Especially because a lot of security guards employed practice right. Ramadan. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah practice. <laughs> yeah. Nah, fair enough. So, yeah, I guess um, to summarise the answers to all of that, um, we're hoping for a normal season next year in terms... And I wouldn't be carrying the shorter, the shorter quarters. I think everyone has kind of realised that shorter quarters are shit. Like, I remember mm. there was a strong case for it previously. And uh, I, I was an advocate when they first broached the idea. I was like, yeah. eh, that means the guys will push themselves more. There won't be, like, those pedestrian kick-to-kick area patches yeah. of quarters and stuff. I thought it would be more foot to the pedal but instead the game's just compressed but like yeah. we said it, it's just coaches just doing what coaches do yeah and like like we said if we were playing one game a week it might be different yeah. um, which you know some teams are but yeah um bruce wants to know our opinion bruce friend of the channel passionate free metal Brucey. fan he wants to know what were your thoughts on the noons free kick <sighs> and this whole free metal carlton saga I can't, like, as shit as the umpiring was in that game and it has been all year, I'm not going to blame the umpires. Freo shat the bed. Like, yeah. Freo had them to rights and they just couldn't finish the job. Like, mm. even that delivery out of bounds, it probably was a, on the weaker side of a delivery out of bounds, but Tabner should have kicked that. Mm. And as much as I love to blame Tabner, everyone knows I love the Tabner blame. I can't blame him at all. Like, other than that slight mistake, he had yeah. a great game. Can't blame him. Like It was a tough one where it was definitely deliberate. But then it's also, they probably wouldn't have paid that if it was halfway through the second quarter. Yeah. Is that right or is it wrong? Mm. Who knows? I was f- comfortable with the free kick with Tabernacle. Yeah, I thought, you know, uh, yeah it was there. It was definitely yeah. there. You can't argue with yeah. the delivery out bounds. Like, yeah. hey, if he was smart, he should have just tried to bomb it into our forward 50 and yeah. hope. The umpires did cook it. Though. Yeah, they shut. Like, Fremantle were a little bit robbed in that respect. Like you said, I thought Carlton were kind of pe- peppering at the end yeah. and, you know, they were creating that opportunity at least. And they're not undeserving winners, but. The Doherty kick should have gone back to him, mm. even if it like I'd like decide for yourself whether it's a free kick. But yeah, I thought way, the free was on the uh, was there, but it was weak. Sure, a okay. weak free with a game on the line. That yeah. is weak as Piers. Fair enough. But either way, the ball should have gone back to mm. Doherty, um, and he would have yeah. had the kick from there on the siren, and it would never have scored. Yeah, at the very least, if you're going to go the advance up the ground rule, give it to the guy that fucking has it, not yeah. a left foot if it's gone. Yeah, I'm going to take it. Nunes? He yeah. Was, he kicked it right-footed. Oh, I swear he's a lefty. Nah, so that Gibbons is a lefty, I'm pretty sure. Uh-huh. I think he's a lefty. Carlton fans can correct me. But either way, uh-huh. yeah, so obviously they gave it to the wrong guy as well. But uh-huh. I think with a kick like that, neither of those guys are proven goal kickers. That's kind of just Nunes unlucky. has been playing forward for him. I suppose. Yeah. But, I mean... Maybe Compared to Doherty, who's a defender. It would have been Gibbons. Uh-huh. Gibbons would have taken the kick. And he's a midfielder forward sort of thing. Wasn't it Doherty that took the deliberate out of bounds? Doherty was the one who kicked it and it went out of bounds. Yeah, but wasn't they, didn't they call the free on Doherty for the brace yeah. or hit after the? Yep. Yeah, so then they the ball went to the boundary line of where the ball exited, yeah. and the closest player to that should have got the free kick. Yeah, and they butchered the I ball anyway. We 
it, it, you go it up the field, but the guy that got the free nah, it, gets it up the field. Okay. Gibbons. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, again, like, mm. much of a much as who takes that kick. Free men are unlucky. Noons fucking nailed it. Yeah. It was, a second he left his bow, I'm like, yep. Yeah. Fuck. What it was a, a clean kick. I was just like, fuck. What a kick. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah And I was already a bit like, ropeable Because I was fucking dealing with the editing issues On that first Hoops <laughs> potty at the time as well uh, On a similar vein Larry the Lobster wants to know uh, What are your thoughts on Carlton's list In terms of what they need to add to it So we've seen them take a big step up this year uh, First of all I guess we'll have you, What have you made of them um, Do you think they're on the right track And uh, what do they need to add to their list To really take the next step I guess I've, I've been a proponent for them Even when they were shit I guess I was yeah. sort of like liked the direction they were going long term. It is in your term, nature, like... though, to sort of go f- advocate for a team that's shit. <laughs> I think it's why you go for Fremantle. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you do. But sorry, go yeah. on. Yeah. But yeah, like, in terms of, like, they've brought in a lot of talent over the past few years, mainly through the draft. Like, yeah. they're starting to see, realise some of that development, some of that. David Tagg sort of helped a lot as well. Like, I think mm. Bolton was sort of just trying to rely on the kids too much. Yeah. Like, whereas Tagg's given them guys like Murphy and... Mm. Older guys to lead by example. Yeah. yeah. I think in terms of like list management, the back line's really sound. I yeah. think with Weedering back there. Weedering and Marchbank is the two keys. Yeah, man, I, keys. I'm a fan of Plowman. And I think Doherty yeah. coming back after yep. two ACLs, you can see a big difference in that. And I, I've seen like, I quite liked Williams Williamson um, down back for them as well. I think there's a, enough talent for them to get by in that respect. Midfield for me is still a little top heavy and young. Mm. So you got obviously Paddy Cripps and, and then Mark Murphy and like Walsh. Ed Kernow, I guess. But then, yeah, then there's a gap to like your Walsh, who's maybe not having the best second year. Um, Liam Stocker, these guys who are just a few years off it. Yeah. I guess what I wouldn't mind seeing them. They're at that like stage where Brayshaw and Chera were the last couple of years where they're sort of figuring it out, like a lot of decent games, but not world beating yeah. games. But now yeah, those Paddy guys Dow are starting to. Well. Yeah. But yeah, those guys are starting around in the form. So you'll see that in the next couple of years with those Carlton guys. We've been listening sort of what I was attempting to say there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess, I think they could still use another experienced, uh, like, 25-year-old midfielder. I mm. think they would definitely not say no to that. Um, and then I think in the off-season, they were talking, obviously chasing a small forward. They got the Jack Martin. And they got their Eddie Betts. Eddie Betts is a short-term solution. Um, Pat Lee's probably still worth pursuing for yeah. him, I feel. So that'll be very interesting to see what happens with Pat Lee this off-season. Yeah. But I think a small forward would be something... Going forward, they would still, you know, be looking at yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, Dominic is a heartbroken Hawthorne fan and a big James Sicily man. And uh, he wants I'm to devastated know, too. He was my entire backline in one of my draft leagues, pretty yeah, much. Me too. He wants to know, in our expert opinions as sports scientists, Oof. what uh, do you think there's any way to reduce the risk of injuries on the knees like what has happened to Sicily? I, like like you said, we're not sports. So I don't know about impacting. I'm not yeah. my forte, but like, it's one of those ones. It was always going to be difficult to avoid this year due to the quick turnaround of games, that mm. sort of stuff. Like you're seeing a lot of hammies, a lot of soft tissue injuries. Well, I like think he's talking about ACLs. Yeah, I ACLs and joints are like. I was going to say, I don't think there's anything you can do in our game to prevent the risk of that. Because mm. I mean, again, talking out my ass, I'm not an expert, but the amount of ACLs are done generally not by wear and tear but they're done yeah, by a quick some, change yeah. direction like that's yeah. never going to change yeah game. same with basketball like yeah, yeah. so acl injuries are always just like one of those yeah. yeah yeah so i think it's just yeah an unfortunate yeah. part of that game but i don't think there is yeah. anything you can do about it yeah they're an uh, rko out of nowhere basically yeah other than bionic legs um oliver ben asks a this is a hard question how will the draft work this year i uh, well it was already a comp- very compromised draft this year, wasn't it? A lot of yeah. teams linked to talent already. Mm. So I think you could probably... You won't see too much bidding, I don't think. A lot of teams will just be sort of mm. like happy to take the guy they're locked into through their academy or whatever. Yeah. In that given position. So there's a few things to unpack because I guess part of the draft format is how big the draft will be. So traditionally you get four or five rounds, which is like yeah. 60 to 80 picks. Now there was talk earlier in the season with... Um, with you know, list no crowds, less revenue for teams. Yeah. Are we going to cut list sizes? We still don't have the full answer on that because the AFL would have lost yeah. so much money this year. If there are list reductions, more players delisted, you're looking at maybe two or three rounds in the draft. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, we're obviously we're just guessing because we probably had more games with crowds than we anticipated a while ago because yeah. there was a period where we looked like we were going to get no crowds. Yeah. So there is there is a bit of revenue coming in. 
is it enough to completely sustain the league in the same way? I'm not sure. And then on top of that, junior football this year has been massively cut. Did they, they didn't have a carnival. So they, they, Don't think they had an 18th carnival. They no. still played like Waffle Colts and yeah, yeah, that's true. Like Tack Cup and stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, it's anyone's guess as to whether or not you're getting the same exposure on these draftees as you would in a normal year. Yeah. Like, like even play- scouting. Like, I don't know, are scouts and like those sort of people allowed to attend these games? I mean, or they have, have to, to deem them pretty essential. Yeah. But like to attending the game. Yeah. So I would, I would hope yes. If no, then yeah. it's going to be a bit of a travesty of a draft. Sure. Uh, this is a good draft to have traded out of. So the Eagles obviously having traded away a lot of picks yeah. uh, for Tim Kelly. I think they're in a good position this year. In the yeah, way you're looking pretty out. smug over there. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. It, I could be completely wrong on that. But, I mean, there was a period where, like, we traded all these picks to Geelong and then if there was going to be two or three rounds in the draft, yeah. um, how the fuck is Geelong, like, not shafted there? There was also a period where you guys looked terrible and it looked like Geelong had hit the jack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Things change when you get bloody seven oath. games in a row at home. Yeah, bloody oath. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I guess to answer the question, we don't fully know, and that's all remains to be seen. I, I'm still hopeful we get a normal yeah. draft, but, again, the value of picks this year might be diminished. Like you said, how does it affect the bidding? And then will be clubs be willing to trade their picks more easily? Will Adelaide probably get... I, mean, I think if I'm, maybe if I'm Adelaide, <laughs> I'm looking at getting cheap second and third rounders uh, from mature... Because once people players, match bids, like the, those teams that have high picks once all the big bids have been matched will be rubbing their hands because mm-hmm. their picks will jump up yep. once the bids and stuff have been done. So like. Yeah. That's it. All right, we'll, we'll probably go one more question. Uh, Beautiful. This is a comedy bird question. Um, and then the rest of them we'll leave for maybe a podcast next week because huh? um, we'll, yeah, smash it out. Comedy bird wants to know, following their big win over St. Kilda, uh, a Geelong flag favourite. So they've played a game in between. Didn't they beat Port since that? Yeah, they beat Port yeah. since that. So, okay, St. Kilda and Port, yep. Geelong have slaughtered. Yep. How, to what extent do you agree with the statement Geelong are premiership favourites? I'd probably put them on the podium somewhere at this point. I don't know if I'd say they're favourites. I'd still give it to Brizzy at this point. Yeah. Considering the fact as well. They, they have a massive advantage. Yeah. <laughs> 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 they'll still be premier. They're still premiers is more. Was, I yeah. got that out of you. Yeah, I did get that out of me. But yeah, anyway, <laughs> Brizzy. <laughs> Buddy, then I still have probably West Coast as my second favourite, but really? Geelong of probably coming hard. If oh, I'm bleeding on the on the podcast, <laughs> I scratched myself. Nice, but yeah, actually, actually on actually I'll backflip on that and so say Geelong have overtaken West Coast and probably yep. gone into that number two for me now. So are you thinking Geelong and Richmond? Geelong and Brisbane. Oh, Geelong and Brisbane. Sorry, yeah. yeah. Oh no, Richmond then. I'm still not that big on Richmond. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm thinking Richmond Geelong. I made a video about this. Um, I'm on Brisbane. Pretty, I think those three are all pretty even for me. Maybe even Geelong Brisbane actually is my preferred grand final. So the reason being, obviously Brisbane have the benefit of um, let's say let's say I get my wish and they play home games at Metricon. I really hope my, this is surely really that's fun. what happens. Hopefully. Like, oh, so you agree now? Like I didn't disagree with that. I was just yeah, okay. it was merely the hang up. Like yeah, I understand yeah, what you're that's saying. That's merely you where shouldn't my diminish hang- the premiership. Yeah, that was yeah, merely okay. my hang up. Like yeah. in pure like personal perspective, absolutely. Like those f- logical, practical things in your own conceptualization world. But yeah, we, yeah, yeah, my drug out of fantasies. <laughs> um, so I'm trying to stifle blood and also do a football podcast. Um, I like that multitasking <laughs> as I do every week. <laughs> um, <laughs> we will be. No, okay. So Brisbane, uh, even if they're playing away games at Metricon, over the course of the season, they'll go into the finals in a good spot with their... Um, a, they've been good at injury management for the last two years regardless, but also, you know, lack of travel burden. Mm. Um, that will help going into finals versus teams that will have been hubbing for so long. West Coast will have just come off 19 days of five games or some shit. Um, the reason I really like Geelong is because they've played to this standard while in a hub. Mm-hmm. In ridiculous circumstances, they're an amazing team for how well they perform, regardless of where it and is. And they've had outs too. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And they got you know Tom Hawkins is probably the best key forward going right now in form in, yeah. in terms of form. So in form um, forward of the league. Yeah. So, and they're experienced, and that I think those teams will rise to the to the top, and they're like the mature bodies who have to have had to play like concentrated football. Um, I think yeah, those teams will rise to the top, and they're hungry because they missed out. In a, from a prelim yeah. last year, I don't know if Richmond have that same hunger this year. It remains to be seen. Yeah, that's that's my hang up with Richmond. They just don't look yep. the same this year than they have in past years. Even when they've struggled early, I don't think mm. they've just 
been more lethargic, a bit. Richmond West Coast in two weeks' time will be very interesting. Definitely. To potentially live stream that. That's the third place podium favourite for me battle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, fair <laughs> enough, fair enough. Yeah, and that's why I, I think the Eagles are going into a hub at a bad time. And I mean, I'm not saying it's unfair. We've had a good run actually, but um, yeah, I just I can't I can't see the Eagles doing eight weeks in a hub and winning a flag. Yeah, that'll be. If they win under those circumstances, it'd be incredible. Yeah, it'd be huge. Yeah, yeah. for sure. All right, uh, let's wrap it up. I think we've had some great questions. Thanks, guys. If you didn't have your question answered, we, we would have got it down here uh, for the next podcast, which we'll do soon. Yep, we need to pump out more Manscaped ads, so we, we need do. more potty. So we do. We need to get eight, uh, eight code uses by the end of the month. Um, so I have no idea what we're on at the moment. But remember, TrueFooty20, all caps, all one word. Um, go check out Cold World and go check out Outdoor out, no, Outback, outdoor, <laughs> Outback. Outback Hoops Experience links in the description <laughs> oh I thought you were going to say something no right. I was just sort of like no outro from Bush alright yeah. cool thanks guys we'll see you in the next one bloody